Here's a little project uh, we've got to investigate this piece of equipment here. Um, what is it? Uh, well, it looks like a record player. Um, and indeed it is. But it's more than that. Let's take a closer look. It's got a very common type of Calaro deck here for speed um, and the usual on off volume control and presumably a turn control um, and here's a very common plug-in uh, Calaro head which will come out and contains a typical um, Calaro crystal cartridge no turnover sort for 78s and LPs, and these things date, I should think, from the late 50s. But the clue is here. Yes, look, a socket uh, marked record. So um, this thing uh, not only plays, but it does record as well. So how does it do that? Well, it does record using this uh, ACOS uh, crystal microphone, and it has a lead. Uh, which has got the correct plug on, which is a technically it's a, it's a Belling Lee plug, it's uh, used for television aerials and because the, it's good, so it's good to VHF and it's a, quite a good screened socket, so you plug it into there and switch the machine to record with a selector switch here and put in this different head which has got a, re a magnetic recording head in it and um, place it on a disc. Now, the disc is a plastic disc with a groove pre-cut in it and it contains, the plastic contains presumably ferric oxide, so it's a magnetic disc recorder with a pre-grooved disc um, with magnetic oxide of iron, or at least I assume it is, because I don't have one of these discs. <laughs> but the person from whom I bought it said he's sure he's got one knocking around somewhere and will uh, let me have it in due course. Well, I thought it might be fun, since we don't have a plastic disc to record on, uh, we would take it stage by stage and see if the thing still works uh, as a record player, and that would be phase one of the uh, project. Um, and because it hasn't been used for such a long time, the one thing we do not do is put a new plug on, plug it in and switch it on and see what happens. Uh, that would be asking for trouble, we mustn't do it, it's potentially dangerous. And in any case, uh, it might spoil something in here that needs looking at. So, what shall we do first then? Well, we'll look at the turntable first and um, see, if we, see what it looks like. Uh, and we we'll need to look inside, and um, it's very stiff. The turntable, look. Um, so there's something wrong with the turntable, so that's as good a place to start as any. Let's have a look at it inside. Uh, there are actually five screws. I missed that one there. And, uh, So will it lift out? Yes, it will. Right, let's get the inside out. Well, here are the works. I've carefully put it upside down so we don't break the plastic arm on the record deck. And the wiring uh, looks in very good shape. The unit was reputed to work when it was packed away many years ago. Here's a mains transformer with its associated selector, which is indeed switched to 214, which is good. Um, yes, then we've got um, an EL84, which of course is the audio output valve, and probably that's the audio output transformer. Um, that's an EZ80, which is the rectifier valve for the DC supply. That is an EF86, which is a you know, low, no, low noise, low level audio amplifier. And there's a little valve here, which is mounted on a um, rubber suspension, so it's obviously important. I'm not quite sure what it is. I shall have a look. Uh, oh, it's, an, it's another EF86. 
Okay, so one of those is probably the audio, the first audio amplifier, uh, and another one would be for something else. Uh, maybe it's the oscillator. Maybe it's the an oscillator, and there is a little coil. Although that's down here, can you see it? Um, that's a little potted coil, um, and that will doubtless be for the oscillator for um, erasing and for the bias on record. Well, I've undone the three screws, and I discover now if you do this, it just comes off, and the three screws are not necessary. Uh, but I think the bashing has actually uh, freed it up because um, we're in business now. So, um, you know, end of uh, phase one. So now the turntable rotates okay. What about the drive? The little, you can just see the top of the motor pulley and the motor's free enough. And this is the idler wheel, which is, listen, the bearing of the idler wheel is badly worn. Uh, but the actual surface, mm, the surface of the idler is pretty crummy. But uh, the worst of it is the selector won't work because this idler wheel is not free to move up and down on its spring loading. So we've got to fix that first. This is the shaft on which the idler wheel rotates. And this is the bit that rises up and down. It's just stiff. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It just literally a spot of oil will cure that. I mean, rather a lot. And then there we are. As good as new. Now the selector should work. Oh, yes. No, the selector still doesn't work. There must be something underneath that also requires. Uh, hmm, it seems to have jammed. Uh, Oh dear. I'll go back to the drawing board. Uh, yes, everything's okay now. This thing which rises up the, um, the idler wheel, uh, it's not only ba it's, this shaft goes underneath. I can't show it you because it's right hidden away. Uh, but this um, shaft, it's a, it's a fork and it's on either side. And it was the bottom half that wanted lubricating as well. But now, the speed selector works, 16, 33, 45 and 78. Um, so I've put the idler back on and I've oiled it and uh, it stopped chattering and it's uh, spinning quite freely. So that's jolly good. And I haven't cleaned it because that is restoration and that isn't what we're doing. We are doing conservation at the moment. We want to see whether, it w whether it's going to go round. Uh, but as I said, we, we have to do one or two important tests first.